because it's quite a bit of work getting to these thermostat housings, make sure this is pointing the correct direction. This is from my sport track truck. If you notice, it's pointing this way. Apparently, these are from Ford Explorers. This one I got from a junkyard, and it points the same way as this one. I ordered this on Amazon. It said in its vehicle filter it fits my vehicle, but it didn't. I took everything apart and found out I couldn't get that in and had to order the correct one. So verify that first. And it's not as simple as it looks, meaning you might think you'd be able to do this, but you can't. The holes won't line up. The thermostat that is inside here opens at 92 degrees Celsius or 198 Fahrenheit. I ordered this thermostat from Amazon and it said it fits my vehicle and it does fit inside here perfectly but the problem is this opens 20 degrees cooler than the original ones that came with the truck so even though it physically fits it's the wrong one so when I ordered the correct thermostat housing that is this metal type the thermostat that was in it is the correct temperature but about five months after I put it in the thermostat got stuck open to where my gauge would hardly move up at all so that's when I finally broke down and bought a Ford original thermostat these three bolts allow this to come off and inside is the thermostat, but don't lose the gasket that comes with it. There is also an O-ring that's on the metal ones. It's a small, thin O-ring like that. On these plastic ones, it's an O-ring that's a lot thicker like this right here. These, they're just meant to have a screwdriver and you just pry that off, but it's a little bit spring-loaded, so be a little careful. Once that's done, this just pulls off and there's an O-ring right here. And it's the same thing over here. There's a little clip that holds that in. And then you have to pry this up. There's an O-ring that holds it right there. These long bolts is what holds it in. So it's just remove these three bolts and the hoses here and it'll come off. This radiator hose that goes here and this hose right here are actually easy to get to and are quite simple to deal with. But this one that goes from the thermostat housing down to the water pump is really hard to, to get him off. So I just took mine and cut it off and I highly suggest buying one of these before you go to install it because it makes it so much easier. I'm leaving some Amazon affiliate links. One is for this hose, but not those two. Another is for an actual Ford thermostat. And this tool, there are two bolts that hold on this radiator fan. You have to hold it with this tool as you go to loosen it. Every Ford Explorer radiator fan that I ever seen in the junkyard has cracks in it. I did a whole video on how this two-ton epoxy works great for fixing those cracks. I'll leave an Amazon link for it as well. So let's get started. Make sure you've let the radiator fluid completely cool off before you do this next step because you don't want to be scalded. I've already removed the bolts that hold on this rock shield here. It has to be taken off. There's one clip holding it up right now. So you just pull him up. That exposes this right here, which is where we're going to drain the radiator fluid. So we just open that up. Don't get scalded. Make sure the engine and radiator are completely cold before loosening this cap. So loosen your radiator cap to get it to fully drain. Watch what happens. I open it. Now it's coming out. Close it. And it stops. Open it again, so that's how you drain it. These three bolts hold this on. It went here, here, and here. They are seven millimeter, not five sixteenths. To take this guy off, just loosen this up. 
and then up over here there's a clip you have to undo here and one you can't see on the camera that's up front here that loosens the air cleaner box this kind of gets in the way but you'll find you can wiggle it off right here these wires were connected to it like this that just is just a little clip that pushes in once that's done all you have to do is pull on it here this whole box now comes up you can just lay this up like that there are four of these bolts right here they take an eight millimeter or five sixteenths will work there's one here there's one there and there's two identical ones down up underneath here so I suggest taking those four out first that allows you to kind of lift up on this and it gives you a little bit more leverage to be able to pull this off it has a push button only on this side here and set him over there once that's done this whole thing just can be laid upside down like that I suggest taking off this wire to do that remove the negative battery terminal you had to disconnect the battery first because this wire right here is hot this is a 10 millimeter nut that holds him on then that allows this to come off this connection right here has a push tab mine broke off because it got so brittle so I can't show you how it works and this one here what you do you take a screwdriver and put it in between here and twist and that allows it to come out like this so what you're doing you're lifting this away in other words you're twisting this so that it can push that out just enough that that unclips there's supposed to be a clip here that just slides in there you have to pull it out to allow this whole wiring harness to now move out of your way I hate working with these so you'll probably have a clamp like this instead loosen this clamp up of course you'll have those compression clamps instead yours will probably be plastic and won't be touching like this but if it is what you have to do is is loosen this up first so you have some wiggle room to allow this to then come off now you take out these bolts I suggest having a magnet on this bolt you definitely don't want it falling down in between something when you go to remove this I had to take a screwdriver and put it in like this and pry on this to pull it up the first time so you may have to do that to get this up it could be stuck in there a little more than it appears the gasket comes up with it yours may be black don't accidentally let it drop most people at this point can get their thermostat housing out because the only thing holding it on is this hose and this hose right here remember this one can be disconnected in two places this one as I suggested earlier just cut him because there's an idler pulley sitting right here that gets in the way and makes it really difficult to get down to even with a good pair of pliers like this dealing with these clamps can be a real fight once you've got the hoses off it's just these three bolts that are holding it in there's one the other one's there and then there's another one right back here you should not need to deal with these but if they're leaking or something and you got to pop one of those off just be careful that's why i put a paper towel in here because if you fling that and it hits the motor somewhere and then comes back into here where it's going to end up is is inside the water pump and you certainly don't want that even though i had all these tools and more i still couldn't get mine out at this point if you'll notice this right here is missing 
this little piece of metal. And I'm going to show you why right now. It pulled the insert out with it. And it was in there so good, I was beginning to think that maybe it was made that way. I tried holding it with vice grips and beating it down on the thing. I tried unscrewing it. Nothing would get that out. And I began to think, hey, maybe it's manufactured that way. But finally, when I took a torch and heated this by heating it red hot, I was finally able to get the bolt out of the insert. So that's a little video from the day that I took it apart and the trouble I was having. So because of that, I'm going to show you how you go all the way down to where you get really good access to this. And I'm going to show you a little tip because I was really worried that I was going to strip this bolt out because it was on there so darned hard. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I do with small bolts like that if you have a grinder. If you look right here, this has a little bevel on it. It's to actually help you slip it on a little easier. I personally don't like those at all because it holds the wrench up from the ground just a teeny bit so it's not grabbing this entire bolt right here. And sometimes that's what causes things to strip out. If you look inside here, you can see where the wrench itself starts stripping out. So what you can do to solve both these problems is just grind it down. So now when you go to put this on, it grabs every millimeter of this here so it won't strip out quite as easily. So it's just a little tip that I like to show we need to take off this serpentine belt. To do that, you need a 3 8 inch ratchet. The longer it is, the better. You may have to put a pipe on yours if yours is too short where you don't get enough leverage because you've got to push pretty hard to loosen it. This goes in right here. Then you just push this way. This comes off right here. This serpentine belt here can be removed without going over these fan blades at all. You just have to... It seems impossible, or at least it did to me at first. It's kind of stuck there on the bottom. See, the whole belt came out. Since we have to remove this idler pulley anyway, we might as well as do it now. It takes a 15 millimeter wrench. 5 eighths looks like it'll fit, but it's loose and you might strip it out if you try a 5 eighths. It's real simple. Once he comes out, there isn't any real parts that'll fall out or anything. So once the idler pulley's been removed, I think you'll find most people can get their thermostat housing out. However, I couldn't, so we're going to go even deeper. We're going to remove this tensioner now. To do that, a 13 millimeter or a half inch will fit. I'm using a half inch. The reason we have to take this off there's a bolt right back up under here that we're going to have to remove in the future. And so we might as well get it out of our way. It allows this fan to come out easier when that tensioner is not in the way. Once you get that bolt completely out, just remove this tensioner. The hardest part of this whole project is stopping the water pump from spinning as you go to loosen the nut on the fan automotive parts stores carry a kit that'll help you do this and they'll usually rent it for free. For those that want to buy a kit I'll be leaving an Amazon affiliate link down below. To get this fan blade off we've got to hold this water pump pulley and turn this nut at the same time. It loosens like every nut that's out there though. It's not reverse threaded because some cars are reverse threaded to take their fans out. We also use this side of the wrench, meaning the one with the oblong hole, 
not this side here. So we've got to take it and put it on the water pump pulley first and get it over both bolts. It's a little harder than it at first appears. There we go. Then we take this big wrench and you loosen it like every wrench out there. Now I've already loosened it. I'm just showing you how it's done. So you just take this wrench, put him on there, and then just turn him like you would any nut or bolt that you're going to unloosen. So you just unloosen them that way. Once they're loose, depending on how rusted they are, mine's been taken on and off a bunch of times. I've got to hold the water pump pulley by my hand and then just spin it. See how it's coming. If you look, the threads are beginning to show. But be careful. Don't go too far this way. Otherwise, it's just going to fall down on you. Now, there are two bolts holding on this fan shroud. One of them's here. They're 10 millimeter. There's this one here. And then on the driver's side, right by the battery, there's one right here. Be a little bit careful. I've had these clips come out that actually hold those bolts in their place. But once those bolts are out and that's removed, what can make things hard is this right here. Transmission pipe here can't be taken off without being a big problem. And this radiator hose right here gets in the way when we try to lift everything out. So what I've kind of learned to do is you take this fan. Like I say, we've already made him to where he's right near the end where he'll fall off. Then lift this guy. And this guy here will come out of this corner. Once he gets out, you still got to deal with that fan shroud. The trick to it is up over here you have to clear that ear and then he pops right out now do keep in mind there's two slots down here in other words these things here go into a slot not two slots they go into a slot that's what holds him on there are only three bolts holding this guy on now i've already loosened them so you don't have to watch me do that they are 15s so don't use a 5 8 they might strip it so these take a take these two out. One, two, they're all identical, meaning they're all going to be the same length. But be real careful because this alternator is heavy and you don't want it falling in and wrecking your radiator up front. So like I say, I've already loosened this. So now this whole thing comes out and you can just set it up over inside of the air cleaner box to get him out of your way. The alternator and its assembly weighs quite a bit. You might want to put a piece of wood or cardboard to help protect the air box where I laid it. As you can see, we now have great access to the thermostat housing. When you go to put things back together, whatever you do, don't forget you drained the radiator. Make sure you fill it back up or you could overheat your car. Down below this video are appropriate Amazon links. If you want to fix the cracks in your radiator fan, click on the thumbnail now showing. This is Ron from Fixing Stuff in Black and White. Signing off.